Hey guys, um, welcome to the Banish the Belly Fat webinar. I'm so glad that you can be here. And uh, my name is Acacia Hines, and I'm the coach, I'm a diamond coach of um, Team Radical Renegades. And I'm just really glad that you're here and you're watching. And if you're not on the call, I'm glad that you're watching the recording. So, anyway, I am going to give you some of my top tips for banishing belly fat. I know that's a problematic area for a lot of us. And then I'm just going to talk about um, some of the things that work well for me and that I do in my life and um, and then feel free to ask questions. Okay, so I have eight like key points that we're going to talk about and some of them are quick and then some of them are a little bit long. So um, the first one is the type of exercise that you're doing. So aerobic exercise is what's going to burn um, more fat. So if you increase your heart rate and you have aerobic exercise like running, biking, swimming, those all will help burn fat quickly. So for me, um, and, and how I, so um, at seven months postpartum, I started T25, and that was how I really shed uh, the extra, um, was one of the ways that I really shed the extra fat, um, and that was the program that I did. After that, I did P90X3. P90X3 is not an aerobic exercise. It's a muscle building exercise. So while I was on that, I noticed that even though I was putting a lot of muscle on, I was working out really hard, I accumulated just a little bit, not a lot, but I did put a little bit more um, fat back on my stomach because I wasn't doing that high cardio, that intensive cardio. So um, there are like goods and bads. Another thing to keep in mind when you are doing cardio is that you don't want to do just cardio. You want to make sure that you are adding in um, three times a week some sort of weightlifting because we know that muscle burns more fat when you're resting. And you don't want to have that like flabby, thin look, what I call skinny fat. You don't want to be skinny fat. You want to be like fit um, and, and at a good weight. But um, for so many years, I was skinny fat because I didn't have any muscles. So now I've got muscle. And um, so cardio is key. And then add on um, a little bit of muscle toning to help, you know, build up that muscle because that's going to help you burn fat while you're resting. Okay. So that's my top tip. Anaero yeah, aerobic exercise. And oh, and so if you do any sort of beach body programs, uh, some really good ones are T25, Max 30. Both of those are really good by Shanti. Anything by Shanti. Size is coming out in July, and that is going to be awesome. And it's going to be super aerobic. That's like a dance one. It's fine. Okay, number two, protein. Say it loud, protein. Oh my gosh. For a lot of women, this is a hard one, but it is super, super key. If you are a vegetarian, I'm sorry, this is gonna be a hard one for you. Um, if you're not against eggs, then put them in your diet because you need protein. If you wanna ban banish the belly fat, you have got to up your protein. So when I started um, the 21 Day Fix um, nutrition component, I really saw uh, like an extra amount of belly fat and just overall fat decrease. And I noticed that one of the things that I really did was I upped my protein. Another thing that I noticed is when I started Shapeology that I upped my protein again because that had a protein replacement in it that I wasn't getting before. So both of those things are key for me. I have about five to six servings of protein a day, um, which is quite a bit. I know it's a lot more than a lot of women because we don't like to eat meat. I'll tell you right now when I make a salad and I like – fill up my little red container and dump it in. I'm like, oh my God, I got to eat all this chicken. It's hard. Like I don't, I like don't really prefer to eat all that chicken. It's a lot of chicken in a salad. Um, but I do it anyway because I know that it's what's going to build my muscles. So I measure it out and then I just eat it. Um, there's no like glamour in it. Sometimes it's really yummy if like barbecue chicken, but then you got to stay away from that barbecue sauce. So um, anyway, okay, so protein. Um, another thing is um, high protein protects your body from um, in, like from becoming insulin resistant. And so, one thing that's really good um, to know is that insulin, which is produced when we're breaking down sugar, tends to cause body fat um, around the belly. So, high protein helps um, your body, you know, protect itself against insulin resistance. Okay, number three. Hi, Lindy. I'm so glad you're on. Can you mute yourself? What? Can you mute yourself? I've got everybody muted. Yeah. 
Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so number three is polyunsaturated fat. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm not a nutritionist. This is stuff that I've learned from my nutritionist, so take all of this with a grain of salt. And if I say something wrong, well, love me anyway. Um, so polyunsaturated fat. So what I've learned from my nutritionist um, a while back is that our cells love fat. They just do. And they like to wrap any sort of toxin that we have in our body, and they like to wrap it up in fat. And that's how they protect ourselves. So you've got like this toxin, free radical stuff we get from preservatives, our makeup, water, just everywhere, um, pesticides. So you got this toxin in your body and then our body says, oh no, that's bad. And so it wraps up that toxin in fat and it says, oh yay, you're safe. And then it says, where are we gonna put this? Oh, let's stick it on our belly and on our thigh and on our butt. And then it's hard to get rid of because your body says, no, what's inside there is bad. I'm not gonna let it go. So there are two things. One, going on a cleanse that helps rid your body of toxins will help rid your body of belly fat. And then two, um, another thing that she taught me is that our bodies are happy if they trade fat for fat. So our bodies will say, okay, I'll give up this hard, stubborn, more saturated fat if you will give me a polyunsaturated fat. And so a polyunsaturated fat is a fat that's a little bit more fluid than a harder saturated fat. So, um, and you can learn a lot more about that. There's a lot more to it, but nuts, seeds, fish, um, like flaxseed, things like that, omega-3s, those kinds of fat, a lot of those are polyunsaturated fats. So add those to your diet. Fish is key. A lot of people don't like fish. You need to eat fish at least once a week. I'm just going to tell you. I mean, just do it. Don't go, I don't like fish. Just do it. Just eat it. Grow up. Eat fish um, once a week. Um, okay, so number three is something that I don't currently do, but I read about it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this. So I will, um, I'm adding this to my diet. I've actually got some in the old pantry over there. Apple cider vinegar, or just vinegar. Um, one of the things that I've read um, in a Japanese study is that vinegar helps your body produce more proteins, which help you burn more body fat. And essentially around your gut, your, your abdomen, and your like love handles and things like that. So um, I think it's like, I don't know, and there's so many other good things about apple cider vinegar if you wanna go read about it, like a ton. But that's um, a really good one to add in your diet, and it's like a shot. So I'm gonna be adding a shot throw it back because you know that stuff is nasty uh, to my morning routine or I think people put it in like apple juice or orange juice but uh, let's just do it as fast as possible okay number five um, this is really important and this one is really important for a lot of us women because we get really stressed out so a little bit of back like background knowledge is stress increases your body's um, cortisol and cortisol increases belly fat now there's a lot more science to that. Um, I don't know all about it, but I'll tell you that's what I know. So when you're stressed out, you increase your cortisol, which increases your belly fat. So studies have shown that if you do yoga, meditation, time and prayer, and anything that's kind of relaxing that helps you de-stress, yoga is a really good one because um, it has that calming, but it also has the fitness into it. Anything that helps you de-stress. Studies have shown um, yoga in particular, but I would say any kind of de-stressor reduces belly fat. So if you are stressed out all the time, that is one of the reasons why you got fat on your abdomen because it's really hard when your body is at this like constant state and your adrenal glands are just going nonstop, um, which I have been, um, I think as moms, we just tend to be a little bit, I'm high strung, so I get stressed, I'm like, oh my god, um, but yeah, but I love yoga, so that's, that's something to think about, okay, number six, this is one that I don't do so great at, I try, but I have a 14-month-old, and lots of mommies, you're like me, and you've got babies, and what do babies do? They wake up in the middle of the night, because that's what babies do, so number six is sleep, you need sleep, your body needs sleep, and not just for like sanity so you don't like, um, well, you can go there, go crazy on kids, but you know, you need sleep because that's how your body repairs itself. Um, studies have shown that people who get upwards to eight hours of sleep 
have lower body fat. And I think that comes back to like stress and cortisol and things like that. But studies have also shown, which I think this is interesting, that people who sleep in on the weekends and don't stick with a normal routine, that causes um, – your body to like your body goes haywire because it doesn't know what to expect. You're like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm getting up at five thirty. Oh, okay, I'm sleeping until seven. I'm getting up five thirty the next day, and then oh, I'm sleeping until ten on the weekends or whatever. That increases cortisol in your body, and so I thought this was really interesting. So you do, but also if you're a mom, then you probably get up at the same time every day because your kid wakes up at the crack of dawn. Oh, look, there's a peak of light. Um, but if you're not a mom and you have the luxury of sleeping in, well, just know it's causing extra belly fat. So get your butt out of bed. No. <laughs> Look. Um, so, yeah, don't sleep in on the weekends. Or, like, don't sleep in, like, crazy late. Like, maybe 30, 45 minutes. But get up at your normal time. Yeah, I just have to sacrifice the extra belly fat for that one. Um, anyway, okay, number, <laughs> number seven. Fiber. Fiber is one of those things that doesn't get talked a lot about, but fiber is key in um, reducing belly fat, and that's going to lead me into number eight, diet. You know, we hate that word, and I don't want it to be like, oh, you got to go on a diet. I mean, diet as in what do you eat on a daily routine? So one through seven, those are like important ones, but number eight is the most important. That's kind of why I'm going at it last. So what you eat... I'm sure you've heard abs are made in the kitchen. It's so true. So very true. And so sad because when you cheat, you put it on your, on your middle or it depends on where your problem area is. But for a lot of us, it's our gut or like, you know, our little love handles or like the sides of our hips. Right. Um, and you also have to remember that when you are eating crap, like cake, anything like that, Cake, cookies, um, ice cream. You gotta know that stuff is loaded with toxins. So what is your body doing? Oh, that's bad, right? So it's not only loaded with sugar, right, which is gonna increase your insulin, which then increases your belly fat. It's also loaded with preservatives and chemicals and toxins, and so your body wraps it, right? And then and then it's gotta store it, keep you safe. So don't make your body keep you safe, right? Eat healthy. Um, now, like this is coming from no judgment because I, I, I like a cupcake like next girl, right? Um, I'm just telling you, saying it like it is. So what does my diet look like on a daily routine? What do I normally eat? I don't normally cheat. I don't cheat very often. I had a couple of weeks where I was a little bad, but um, normally I don't cheat. So high protein. I eat a lot of protein. That's like, it's not half, but I would say it's like a good third of what I eat. Um, then veggies, eat those veggies, whether you like them or not, eat your veggies. So lots of leafy greens. We buy this big thing of leafy greens and I put leafy greens on everything. I put them in my smoothies. You can't even taste them in your smoothies. Just stick them in there, blend them up with your Shakeology. It changes the texture just a tiny bit, but you'll get used to it. Um, I blend them up with your protein or whatever. Put your greens in there. It's not going to hurt you. Um, leafy greens. If I'm eating anything on a tortilla, I stick greens in it. I just, just put some more. It's, I mean, they're good for you. Um, increases your antioxidants. Um, I also do like sugar snap peas and celery and carrots and bell peppers. And, um, there aren't really any vegetables that I don't eat. I don't eat eggplant. I mean, it may be fried, but you know, that doesn't help the belly. So we'll not even go there. Um, but yeah, so veggies, 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 just eat your stinking veggies. Veggies and protein, if you're getting those in your diet, you're going to be decreasing your belly fat. Okay. Carb and fruit. Those two, they're not your enemy. It's not like you can't have them, but you, they should be a lot less than your, your veggies and your protein. So you need complex carbs. Do not, I mean, step back from any sort of pasta because even if it's gluten-free, it's not good for you. Because it, if it's pasta, it's rice pasta, it's wheat pasta, it doesn't matter. It is processed. To get it to that pasta form, they have processed the dog out of it, and you don't want it. Because it's going to turn into sugar pretty quickly in your body, which increases your insulin and then increases your belly fat. So just don't do it. 
go for a uh, spaghetti squash if you're going to have pasta or get you a zucchini noodle-ish maker. What's that called? I don't even know. Um, and swap out any sort of pasta with a vegetable. So, and then, you know, if you're really wanting to treat yourself, like I am when I have a spaghetti, if I eat spaghetti and I have my spaghetti squash, then I get one piece of Ezekiel bread and that's the only bread that I really eat. Um, and I'll do like garlic toast and I can do that and feel good about it because I know like the rest of my meal is vegetables. So, um, okay, next, few complex carbs so you don't need a lot. Um, I'll eat some rice, brown rice, long brown rice because it takes a long time for your body to metabolize whole oats or still cut oats. That's a good one. Um, be really careful on a bread. Like I said, Ezekiel bread is one of the few that I eat. I don't hardly eat any other breads because they're processed because they have sugar or fructose or preservatives or crap. And um, I don't do, I don't do crackers. I don't do basically if it's a carb and it comes in a box, um, and any sort of fashion other than this old, like regular harvested fashion, I'm probably not going to eat it. Um, so be, just be very careful because that to me keeps your body from burning your own energy because where do you get your energy? You get it from carbs. Also eat your carbs in the morning and the afternoon and then lay off your carbs in the evening if you're trying to lose weight or just eat very minimal carbs, just enough where you don't wake up at 3 a.m. hungry, but not very much. Do not load up your dinner plate with carbs, meat, veggies, a little bit of carbs. Um, and then, okay, and so then another thing that I read, and this is something that I do, especially for snacks or lunch, is to pair, always pair, if you're going to eat a carb, do not ever eat it alone. Always pair it with a protein, because when you put a carb and a protein together, it keeps one protein, revs up your metabolism for the next two hours, and the carb helps you stay full, so you won't be starving. And then if you could put um, a protein, a carb, and a healthy fat together for our lunch, then that's gonna, or even breakfast, that's gonna keep you full for a lot longer. So, let's go through what, it, what my day might look like. So this morning I got up, and I didn't eat enough food today. Um, I was busy, but this morning I got up. I had me a um, habichuela, which is something, it basically, it's like a green bean omelet. I know it sounds weird, but it's really good. And I started eating them in Costa Rica. So I try to add a veggie for breakfast. I know. It's kind of weird, but just do it. Find something that works. So I had um, a green bean omelet. Sometimes I have a spinach omelet. Sometimes I just really make sure I get that veggie in at my very next snack. So green bean omelet, piece of Ezekiel bread with a little bit of peanut butter. That's what like a morning would look for me. So healthy fat, veggie, carb, protein, got all four. Then a snack would be like carrots and sugar snap peas or something like that. Um, if I have a, uh, like a blue and I'm not going to eat it later in the day, then I might throw in some hummus with that. Um, or I might do like a rolled up piece of turkey and then, so I have a little bit of a protein and then I'll eat my vegetables. Lunch normally looks like some sort of leftovers um, around my house, especially cause I'm not working. So it would have been like we did a stir fry. So um, lots of vegetables with ch grilled chicken and, and some rice. And then um, I'd have another snack, which I had Shakeology today. And that's like a daily go-to. For me, it's like my daily source of dense nutrition. It's got all of my um, vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, protein, everything. And it's awesome. So I worked out and then I had my shake. And then for dinner, um, I had leftovers from what I posted on my fitness page last night. So it was like a tortilla with a bed of greens. And then I put the chicken avocado on top. So, um, that's kind of what my day looks like. And I just kind of go from there. So um, I do have a carb at dinner. I can't go zero carbs. I don't want to lose weight. So I'm not going to cut out my dinner carbs. I'm trying to build muscle. And I wake up at 3 a.m. hungry if I don't eat a carb. So I have to have a carb at dinner. But if you are trying to lose weight and you can cut out a carb or just lower it and maybe only eat half of the carbs that you would normally eat, do that at dinner. Um, one other thing you notice is that when I'm trying to really cut my abs, I don't eat a lot of fruit. 
fruit is really high in sugar. So the only fruit I had today is um, half of a banana in my Shakeology. I just don't. Um, I don't eat a lot of fruit. Now, if I do eat fruit, it's going to be either my first snack of the day or with breakfast. Or if I'm really, really craving something sweet, I'll go to a fruit. But, I mean, you have to realize that fruit's got a lot of sugar. So if you're eating a lot of fruit, back up. Back up, because even though it's not processed sugar, it's still sugar. So another thing that my nutritionist told me about is when you're eating, looking at your fruits and your veggies, you should be eating twice as many vegetables as you do fruit. So even though fruit is healthy, you should be eating twice as many veggies as you do fruit. So that's just something to um, think about. And then water, water, water. Drink your water. Um, and then that's it. That's all I have for you guys. So if you've got any questions, just unmute yourself or comments or anything like that. You can all unmute yourself and then chime in. I'm listening. And don't leave me here like listening to crickets. Okay, so let me ask you this. Okay. Because I am the world's biggest sugar addict. I'll admit it right now. Like I can down an entire pot of Ben and Jerry's and then probably eat a whole nother one in one sitting if I really wanted to. Okay. And when I was pregnant with Kimber, I did that, <laughs> like, a lot. And so now, like, not having sugar or some kind of something sweet, like, sends me a downward spiral of mean anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. So I try to eat, you know, like, a few more servings of fruit just so I can get that sweet factor. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't really work too well. So okay. then... I don't know. So then I just try to eat more vegetables and then it still doesn't work. So then I end up eating like, you know, one of those 80 calorie little ice creams out of the hospital refrigerator because I can't handle it. <laughs> okay. So, um, I have a really big sweet tooth and I used to eat a lot more sugar than what I do now. I'll tell you, um, I kind of had a breaking point which come to shove, like I change. So I, a little bit about me. I'm going to spend my whole winter in a chair. Every winter, drainage and um, a trash can and like Kleenexes because I have asthma and it was so bad and I had, because of sugar causes so much inflammation in the body and then um, dairy and I just was having, it was just terrible. And I didn't eat clean and it's not just sugar. It's like it's like chips. I would eat lots of chips, which what does that do in your body? Well, it turns into sugar. So even though it's not sugary, it still turns into um, the same thing in your body very quickly. So it's not good for you and aggravates your body. And so anyway, I got married and I was like, okay, I can't spend the rest of my life in this chair. I've got to do something. Um, and so that's when I really started looking. So you might not be at that point, but when I was at that point and I had like this angry, like, and I know what you're talking about because my body, you go through a withdrawal, you're addicted. That's just the way it is. You're addicted just like anything else. And so you have to get to a point where you say, um, I'm not going to allow this in my house, not even for my kids, not even for my husband. It's not going to be here. Guess what? I don't have anything at my house that doesn't need to be in my house because I eat it. It's as simple as that. I eat it. If there is chocolate in my house, I'm going to eat it. There's not chocolate. There are no chips. There's no, well, I'm not a Coke person, but there's no Coke. There's no juice. There's no, I have willpower at the grocery store. If it's in my house and I'm hungry or I'm bored or it's lying around or it's there, I eat it. And I know like after you eat it, you're like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. But you know, like your willpower and it's late and it's 10 and you're tired and your kids and you just want something, right? Um, get it out of your house. I'm sorry. That's just, I mean, like your willpower and self-control can only go so far. So throw it away, literally. And I know that's hard for a lot of people because like, I paid money for that. Well, you know what? You're also going to pay money for your doctor's bill when you are feeding yourself crap. So you can either throw away your crap or you can feel like crap and end up at the doctor. And one of the things is if you get sick a lot, guess what? Sugar lowers your immune system for the next six to eight hours. So as a nurse, if you eat sugar at work and then you're around all these sick people, your immune system has now been lowered for the next six to eight hours because of that Snickers or whatever dessert was in the lounge or, you know, and that's what I have to remind myself when I was teaching is like, don't do it. You're around, you live in a Petri dish half the day. Like, don't do it. Um, so I mean, 
there are, there's a, there's a sugar detox, um, on Pinterest. That's a good one. And it's like, it has levels, level one, level two, level three. So that might be something that you look at and then find you a, um, like a, somebody he'll do it with you and then make a bet, like an expensive bet, like 50 bucks. Something that's like, if I win this and I'd go, like if you cave, then you have to pay the other person 50 bucks. And if they cave, they pay you 50 bucks. Like put some skin in the game. And then, you know, if you neither one of you cave, well then good, you get to keep your own 50 bucks or you go to the movies or something like that. That helps me. So, or even with your husband, if you guys both want to, it's like if I cave, then you, you have to do this. And if you cave, then I, you know, then I have to do, or whatever, you know. Um, so put some skin in the game and then you're just gonna have to go on a deep, a withdrawal. I'm sorry, I hate to tell you that. I mean, if you've got some major self-will, you might be able to slowly wean yourself off. I'm not that kind of person. I'm like a, and then it sucks for the next like two weeks, but then it's over. Um, some people can wean themselves off. I'm not like when I stop drinking coffee, it's like I'm a bear for the next four days. Cause I have like major headache cause I'm a caffeine addict, but then it goes away and I'm okay. So. Yeah. There's no way I could wean myself off. I've tried that so many times with like, okay, I'll just have like this one tiny little thing here. And then the next thing you know, like I'm driving to Brahms. Yeah. No, that's how uh, I am. Yeah, so no. it's, I'm like a, I'm an all or nothing kind of person. So I'm either I'm not doing it or I am. So right now I'm off of sugar and I've been off of sugar for three days and I'm okay. Cause I'm not like, you know, eat, eat it very often, but I had been doing some eating and now I'm trying to get ready for summit. So it's like I cut it all out and I, I'm cutting out really most of my fruits. I'm really trying to cut up. So anyway, all right. Any other questions? Anything else you guys are thinking of that you want to know? Okay. I have a really vain question. But, okay, so I don't know about you and your pregnancy, but I have a lot of stretch marks because I went way past my date and it was really big. And so I'm just curious, so if I lose my belly fat, what did it, did you have stretch marks? I didn't. I know. Hate okay. me. Okay. I went 10 I hate you. Right. You're like. It's huge, but I just. I got. Oh. Yeah, I got to like my last month. And then, bam, I had a ton, and it was, like, bad. So, I'm, I don't know. I was just kind of curious on how much it would affect my appearance. Of my, I don't know. It's just my thing. I don't, I don't like the look of it. I, I guess my belly, I've lost a lot of fat, but it's just, like, the, the stretch marks just, like, glare at me in the mirror, I guess. And so, yeah. I was just kind of curious on what it would do, I guess, once it, like, got more muscle, I guess. Okay. Well, I'll say first. Know. And foremost, you are your worst critic. So your stretch marks probably yeah. 10 times worse to you than they do to anybody else. So keep yeah. that in mind because that's the way we are as women. Two, um, have they lightened yet? Because a lot of times they turn white. Are yours white yet? Are they still white? Um, mine are now, no, mine are, mine are back to not natural. Like it looks like natural skin. It's mm -hmm. just, they're just a little lighter than the rest of my skin, I guess. So what I would I don't do, know. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what I would do is find a good, um, like a vitamin E oil, like a like a good yeah. one that's supposed to help a lot. I would use that. Mama Mio makes a really good like after a stretch mark, which it's super clean. There's no like crap in it, no parabens, no. I love that word crap. If you haven't noticed, um, yeah. But then, <laughs> there's no crap in it. So um, Mama Mio, that's a really good brand, and you can get it online. I would use that. That's what I used throughout my entire pregnancy, and then. Um, okay. And then I would just go for it because you're not going to know until you, and you know, until you get there. I know. And like, yeah. I don't know, like a lot of people say like, yes, our vanity, you know, is there, but if, you know, it's a body you work hard for and you know, mm -hmm. like feel good about your skin, feel good about the fact that you carried, um, little Sloan that long and that she's happy and she's healthy and like you did that, you know? So I don't yeah. know if it any better, but that's what I would do. I would I know. get you a good, um, a good like after aftercare product that's going to really help soften the look of those stretch marks. It won't make them go away, but a lot of times it does soften the appearance quite a bit. And then um, dry brushing. Have you heard of dry brushing? Mm -mm. It's supposed to help quite a bit with um, loose skin. So like I've been dry brushing now for like a year, but I didn't do it a lot while I was pregnant, but I did some. Anyway, it stimulates your skin because your skin is the, like the largest organ in your body. And it has like a lot of other good benefits like um, 
your lymphatic system is right underneath your skin. And so that drains like toxins out of your body. Anyway, um, but dry brushing helps with loose skin and it helps with um, like, scar like scars or stretch marks because it exfoliates and it helps rejuvenate the skin on a regular basis. And so um, it helps repair skin cells and things like that. Um, and you can Google it and find out how to use I mean, it's okay. really easy um, to do. But, okay, okay. Um, any more questions? Are all good? Yeah. Okay, so I've got two and a half minutes left. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk real quick about one other thing that I think is important to note um, when you're trying to rid belly fat. And this is something that I normally do every year. Um, I haven't done it in the last two years, and I can really tell because I had a baby and then I was nursing, and you can't do this while you're doing either one of those. So a liver detox is really important for ridding fat and belly fat especially. And the reason why is your liver processes two things. It processes your toxins and it processes your fat. But your liver can't do your fat if it's overloaded with toxins. So if you go on a liver detox, um, then that will help once your liver is clean, then you're, then it can focus on your fat. So, um, so, uh, Beachbody has a really good one call and it's like the whole thing. The one I always go on is 21 days and it bites. It's really terrible. I'll just be really honest with you. It's not like, I mean, you start to feel really good, but it's still hard because it takes a lot of self-control. But um, there's the 21 day um, like ultimate reset by Beachbody. Um, another one is called standard process uh, cleanse either one they're they're not cheap i'm sorry to tell you because it's 21 days of supplements it's 21 days of shakes it's 21 days of things that your body's not getting um normally they're like um fruits and veggies the first like half and then fruits veggies and proteins the the second half you're going to probably lose a good amount of weight it's going to re completely restart your entire system it's going to restart your metabolism it's going to restart your um your cravings Mackenzie, so like this is the one that when I normally go into like sugar addict mode, this is what I do. Anyway, I have less than a minute, so I'm going to get off here. But thank you guys so much for attending. I appreciate it. And um, feel free to message me if you have any more questions. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.